Hi everybody. Hey, welcome back to my shop. Um, today is something a little bit different. Uh, a while ago, I built myself a gun cabinet for my office uh, because I live in the country and so I keep a few guns kind of real handy, you know, a 22 and a shotgun and stuff like that uh, uh, to take care of the errant uh, critter or need. And uh, I just didn't want them leaning in the corner or some open thing. So I built a glass gun cabinet. At the time, I took a bunch of still pictures as I made it, more as a way for me to kind of use it as reference to myself. as like, how did I do that again? And uh, Nick, the producer said, why don't you take those pictures and kind of turn it into a kind of a how-to video. And so that's what we're gonna do today. I think it's gonna work. Now there's not every single step and it's not it's not intended as a, this is exactly how you do it. It's more of a, I'd call it like a motivational video. And so this might give you the idea to say, hey, you know what, I could do something like that. And you could simplify it even more or you could make it more complicated. Uh, you know, you could make it fancier or different designs, but this will tell you how just some schmo like me in my shop here, you know, table saw and a band saw and a couple of things like that, uh, was actually able to create something that I'm, I'm pretty proud of. Uh, and it does me yeoman service. So let's dive right into it. You know, everything starts out as a box, basically. It doesn't matter how fancy your furniture is, unless you're doing something Art Nouveau with curves and, and things like that. Most furniture starts with a box. And so if you're not building boxes yet and you'd like to try something like this, I would recommend that just you know build a few boxes and learn how to get things square and make some drawers and stuff like that. It's actually really pretty easy. You know, this is something called a rabbit. Uh, in Europe, it's a rebate, and basically it's pretty classic way of joining corners together. So in this situation, I use my table saw with a dado blade, and you just make a cut, and then the other piece of wood sits neatly on it. And I always glue and screw joints like this. In the shelves in the gun cabinet, I went ahead and used a dado blade and I cut the uh, grooves you can see going across the board. And something to remember too, is that if you're doing this, leave that piece of plywood double wide and then cut the grooves all across both of them at once and then rip them lengthwise. And that way the grooves line up. Ask me, how do I know? <laughs> the hard way, of course. You know, there's a bunch of ways you can score up corners. Companies like Rockler and Woodcrafters and stuff like that, they make little jigs and stuff, you know, so it sort of helps you hold the corner of things while you glue up and use a pin nailer or whatever it is you're gonna be doing. Unless you have two or three helpers, they really make a big difference. I always square things up and it makes, a, it's a huge difference for final assembly. Because remember, if you're a 16th inch off here and a 16th of an inch off there, well, two or three of those, suddenly you're at a quarter of an inch. And a quarter of an inch means it's gonna be ugly, whatever it is you're doing. This is part of the glue up. You know, I had the basic case built and then you'll see a rabbit along the edge. And that's because we're gonna put a piece of plywood on the back of it that's gonna fit in there very neatly. And right here, as I recall, I was gluing up that uh, shelf in the middle there. Here's just sort of a close up. You can see the joint where the shelf slides into that dado. The orange clamp, I have that on a piece of scrap plywood there just so it didn't make dents in the side. Now here's where you can see where I, I cut the back into two different pieces and you'll notice that it's going to sit on the ledge and then it's also going to sit on the inside of the shelf. And so that way, when you look from the inside, you don't see a seam. Uh, like they used to say, always cheat, always win. Uh, here's what the overall back looks like and it's just gonna slide right in. Now remember, just take your time, measure everything. You don't have to build the same as this, but this is just, is gonna give you an idea of how something like this can go together. This is the best idea in the world. And it's basically an air nail gun. And so it's powered by a little compressor and it just makes assemblies like this go by so much faster. Like I said, I always glue up and nail or screw, but if you're using like type on three glue and use a nail gun, you're pretty much done. And then if you really want to be careful, you can fill the nail holes. And then if you're going to paint, it's seamless, it's, it's real, and they're not very expensive. These nail guns, I mean, you can buy one for $100. So here's that Type Bond 3 glue. This is what I use for everything. I love it because it's waterproof, it's interior, exterior. It gives you enough working time so while you're gluing something up, you can still 
you know, get your work done. This is the time when you start to get excited because you go, oh, I, it's starting to look like something now. <laughs> yeah. This is the nicer grade of plywood that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or something like that. You just take your time. The only real problem with this wood is that sometimes when you cut it in the edges, there'll be voids. So if you're gonna trim it, that's okay. If you're not gonna trim it, you're gonna have to fill that first. I decided to get fancy and rather than have this thing just sit on the ground, I went ahead and did some YouTube shopping and I found a really nifty way to make these uh, little legs for the side that raises the bottom up off the ground just a little bit. And so by making some angle cuts like this, I use my miter saw. It's just eye candy, you know, it makes it look better than it would look if it was just flat. This is the miter saw and I'm setting up for that angle cut on the foot of one of them. And you can actually see the uh, one of the pin nails that were it was holding this leg together because I glued up some wood. Here's what it looks like before I do the cuts. And I know it looks kind of complicated. It actually took me a while to get, wrap my head around it. But once I did, then I went, oh, I understand. You know, you just, you cut it on the bandsaw and then you chamfer it and it just, it goes together, you know, just like this, a little bit at a time here. I used a template that I made on a piece of scrap plywood. And this is what had my brain confused. This sort of two curves. And then once I cut the first curve, then I realized, oh, then I just flip it 90 and cut the other curve. And that gives you that really nifty corner. So I used a bandsaw to do it. And uh, there's a couple more of those pin nails. Uh, I went ahead and filled those holes afterwards. So here's kind of what you end up with. And then of course, judicious sanding and stuff like that. No small amount of some minor curse words maybe. And remember, if you have a belt sander, like a handheld belt sander, you can just flip it upside down and then suddenly you have a kind of a standard belt sander. That's really convenient. I am spoiled, I'll be the first to admit, because I have a jointer, and what a jointer does is it makes wood flat. Once I did the rough cuts and got everything organized, I went ahead and ran this over the jointer until I ended up with, ta-da, four legs. And you can see on the corners there that the, the bottom of the case just sits very neatly. Boy, it makes a huge, difference. It just, it turns it from, well, this is a plywood box, you know, sitting on the floor to furniture, you know. <laughs> I pay sometimes to just sort of push your envelope a little bit and try something because it doesn't matter. If you mess up, you just get another piece of wood. Here's the top chamfer and that chamfer is just because it looks nice. This one took some thinking too. This is, you know, for the barrels of, of the guns inside the case. And so you have to make sure that you get the width right, you get the depth right, and then you get uniform cuts. And I think I used the bottom of a, of a can of paint or something to get the U portions, and then just took my time and cut them out. I think I just used a handheld jigsaw. This was another little bit of fancy, but it's really easy. I have a router on a router table, and so you just use a little, you know, whatever router end you like, and then I put some stop blocks on, and then you just lay this down on it and cut one, and then move it and cut it and move it and cut it, and there you go. There they are, like preliminary fit and mounted. I went ahead and put a piece of trim on the front of this. This separates the top from the bottom. I got some carving tools, and I thought, well, you know what, I'm gonna put a little just sort of carving there just to break it up a little bit. And I didn't plan anything. I, and I just sort of took the carving tool and made a carve. <laughs> and then the other ones kind of came out of that. It actually adds a really nice touch. You can kind of see it in this one. Uh, I thought long and hard on the colors. I really like this kind of subdued green. It's almost like a colonial green. And then I painted the inside a lighter color. It's still just got a tiny green hint in the inside and it just sort of carries that theme. You can kind of see that carving. And uh, although I suppose you could argue and say, some people look and say, hey, what's wrong with the wood there? You know, <laughs> here's what that uh, the legs look like. And if you look carefully, you'll see it's not perfect at all. I'm, you know, I was painting it with a roller and, um, you know, I, I didn't do that good of a job, but that's okay. Painting kind of brings out the reveal in these. A reveal I learned is that's where you'll, you'll see a transition and it will shadow. And that's what makes it look interesting. Because here, if the light was straight on, you wouldn't really see much. That's what I did on the top here. I just made these on my table saw and then just did it because it looks nice on the top, <laughs> you know? And it took me a, a few times before I got it right. There you go. 
Well, I hope that was fun or at least get you motivated to do something in your own shop or in the garage or in your spare bedroom if you want to. I am really fortunate. I know that, you know, I've got a table saw and a joiner and a router and a, you know, everything else. You know, it took me 50 years of collecting and getting organized to do that. So don't be in a hurry and you'll be surprised what you can do with a good quality skill saw and uh, some drywall screws you know so youtube is full of videos much better than mine just now but if you're a gun guy and you wish that you had uh, a cabinet for some of your guns just do it that's the only thing i have to say so hey thanks for tuning in and uh, subscribe if you want to see more silliness like this and uh, remember our parent magazines are american handgunner and guns magazine so if you like good gun uh, content and even things like this uh, you might think about subscribing. So uh, until the next time, you guys be safe out there and I look forward to seeing you here in my shop.